In this lecture, we take a look at inversions of circles with respect to another circle. We start with circle C1, centered at O, and with radius R. Then we take another circle C2, centered at O1. For each point P on C2, we find its inverse with respect to C1. We call this inverse point P prime. What does it mean precisely for two points P and P prime to be inverses with respect to a circle C sub 1? Two points P and P prime are inverses with respect to C sub 1 if the product of the distances of P and P prime to the center O is equal to the square of the radius of C sub 1. Therefore, we have OP times OP prime equals R squared. We also require that P prime be on the segment OP. Observe that as P travels around the circle C sub 2, its inverse P prime seems to trace another circle. In this lecture, we will show that the locus of the inverse points of the points on C2 is indeed another circle. If it so happens that the center O of C sub 1 is on C sub 2, then this time P prime will trace a straight line as P moves around the circle C sub 2. This situation when O is on C sub 2 is a separate case from what we present here. However, the proof for the situation when O is on C sub 2 is very similar to the proof of the case that we present here. The case that we will consider here is when O is not on C2. Also, without loss of generality, we will assume that P is not on the same line as O and O1. At this point, we provide an outline for the proof. We construct the line through O and O1. This line intersects C2 at two points. If the two circles are not concentric, then one point of intersection is the point on C2 that is farthest from O. The second point of intersection is the point on C2 that is closest to the point O. Let the farther point of intersection be Q and the closer point of intersection be S. If it so happens that the two circles are concentric, then the points of intersection Q and S will be equidistant to O and the proof that we present here will still work. We now construct the inversions of Q and S. Let the inversions of Q and S be Q prime and S prime respectively. The key to our proof is showing that angle Q prime P prime S prime is a right angle. As such, the points P prime Q prime and S prime will be non-collinear. It is a fundamental fact that three non-collinear points determine a unique circle. That is, there is a unique circle that passes through all the three points. Then the right triangle Q prime P prime S prime will be inscribed in this circle. And because what we have is a right triangle that is inscribed in a circle, the hypotenuse of this right triangle is a diameter of the circle. This diameter, whose endpoints are Q prime and S prime, is independent of P. Since the endpoints Q prime and S prime of the diameter stays fixed, as P goes around C2, P prime stays on the circle determined only by the diameter Q prime S prime. To show that triangle Q prime P prime S prime is a right triangle, we will examine two pairs of triangles. We will show that each pair of triangles is made up of similar triangles. The first pair of triangles is made up of triangle OPQ and triangle OQ prime P prime. The second pair of triangles is made up of triangle OPS and triangle OS prime P prime. To get started with the proof, we show that triangle OPQ is similar to triangle OQ prime P prime. First, we write down the equation governing inverse points. P and P prime are inverses with respect to C sub 1. 
and so r squared is equal to op times op prime q and q prime are inverse points and so r squared is also equal to oq times oq prime the points s and s prime form a third pair of inverse points with respect to c sub 1 and so r squared is also equal to os times os prime we divide the first and second products by the product of op prime and oq prime we get the following proportionality equation. OP divided by OQ prime equals OQ divided by OP prime. We set these two fractions equal to K. And so OP is equal to K times OQ prime. And OQ is equal to K times OP prime. We now apply the law of cosines to the big triangle OPQ. Let theta be angle POQ. On triangle OPQ, the segment that is opposite angle theta is segment PQ. And so the law of cosines says that the square of PQ is equal to the square of OP plus the square of OQ minus twice the product of OP and OQ times cosine theta. We replace OP by K times OQ prime and OQ by K times OP prime. And so the square of PQ is equal to K squared times the square of OQ prime plus k squared times the square of op prime minus twice k times oq prime times k times op prime times cosine theta. We factor out k squared from the right side and observe that what we have inside the parentheses is the law of cosines applied to the small triangle O Q prime P prime. Segment P prime Q prime is opposite theta in the small triangle. And so inside the parentheses on the right side, we have the square of P prime Q prime. Taking non-negative square roots, we get that P Q equals K times P prime Q prime. This is the third proportionality equation required to show that triangle OPQ and triangle OQ prime P prime are similar. It is almost exactly the same proof to show the triangle OPS and triangle OS prime P prime are similar. All we'd have to do is to replace the letter Q by the letter S, and we'd have exactly the same proof. Our main objective is to show that angle Q prime P prime S prime is a right angle. Suppose that the measure of angle Q prime P prime S prime is A. There is another right angle in the diagram, and that is angle SPQ. Segment SQ, which is one of the sides of the triangle, is a diameter of circle C sub 2. Any triangle inscribed in a circle such that one of its sides coincides with a diameter of the circle is a right triangle. Now suppose that the measure of angle PQO is M. Angle Q prime P prime O has the same measure because triangle OPQ is similar to triangle OQ prime P prime. 
and angles Q prime P prime O and PQO are corresponding angles between these two triangles. Now let's examine angle PSQ. Angle PSQ is exterior to triangle OPS. Suppose the measure of this angle is N. Corresponding to this exterior angle is angle P P prime S prime. Angle P P prime S prime has to be congruent to angle P S Q because they are the corresponding exterior angles between two similar triangles. Now take a look at the point P prime. We have three angles whose measures are M, A, and N respectively and these three angles form a straight angle. Therefore, M plus A plus N is equal to 180 degrees. Now, take a look at triangle PQS. The measures of its angles should add up to 180 degrees as well. And so M plus 90 degrees plus N equals 180 degrees. Therefore, A must be 90 degrees. Therefore, triangle Q prime P prime S must be a right triangle. And its hypotenuse Q prime S prime is a diameter of the circle locus of the inverse points of the points on C sub 2.